All right, beginners, so we are on art number eight today, all right? And it's we are still on the six elements of art, one of six elements. Today, we're gonna to be working with texture. But really quickly, what um, elements of art have we done so far? We started off with color, then we moved on to value. So color, value, line. We into a project for line, but that's because we're always really working with line, all right? And then we did the pumpkins, which was shape. And now we're moving on to texture. And then we were, after today's art, we've got five um, elements done and we need what? We need six, so we just need one more and we're done with all of our elements. All right, so we're working with texture today and it says texture. It describes how things look, so how we see things, how they look and feel. So if I'm looking around, let me see something. Hmm, maybe my wall back here. I'm looking at it and does it look smooth in the camera? It might look a little smooth, but if I zoom in really, really close in just a second, you're gonna see what? It's bumpy, it's no longer smooth. So we are working with the element of texture and it gives us examples. It says um, rough, so something rough, something smooth, something hard, something soft, something sharp, or even something bumpy. And these aren't all the textures. There's a whole bunch of textures, but these are just a couple of examples that we're gonna fill in right here down below in just a second, because we're gonna work on a very fun art project today that I think you guys will really like. So let's go ahead and work on this page together. All right, so let's work with one of these first. Let's do bumpy first, all right? What do you think bumpy would look like? on a page, if someone were to draw or paint something buffy, do you think it would look like in your head? All right, let's go ahead and make something bumpy together. To represent bumpy, we're gonna draw all these little kind of hills. It doesn't have to be perfect, just random little hills. All right, and it looks what? It looks kind of like it's bumpy if you were to touch it. All right, and moving on, let's do another one. Let's do something soft. I don't know about you, but when I think of something soft, I think of maybe like a cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw something nice and fluffy. I'm not gonna push down really hard like I did with the bumps. Just something nice and puffy like a cloud. All right, and that would represent soft. And we can draw some little clouds inside. All right, maybe like a little, um, some cotton. All right, now let's do something sharp. I don't know about you, but I think when I think of something sharp, I think of maybe a pointy knife, or I think of maybe some glass that might have broken. All right, so let's go ahead and make something pointy to represent sharp. I'm gonna make some glass, like maybe someone threw a baseball in the house when they weren't supposed to. All right, so something sharp. Now for something smooth, maybe you can think of, what's something smooth in your house? Maybe um, a window is smooth, a glass cup can be smooth, an apple, just like we drew apples before, they can be smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw an apple. And to make my apple look smooth, I'm gonna draw this little shiny mark to show that what it's shiny and it's smooth. Alrighty, moving on to something rough. What's something rough? Can you look around your house? Maybe you wanna pause your video and take a trip inside your house or in your backyard and see if you can find something rough. I don't know. If you look outside, like we learned in science, trees are covered in bark and bark can be pretty rough. So next time you go outside, maybe you wanna take a look at the trees. We'll draw a little tree here. All right, and we're gonna draw some lines to represent the bark on our tree. Because the bark is rough. And last but not least, we have hard. And when I think of something hard, I think of a rock. A rock can be hard. Or I think of a brick wall. So let me go ahead and draw a brick wall. I'm gonna start off with some lines going straight across. And now I'm going to draw my lines 
going the opposite way. I'll start with this one right here. And then another one here and another one there. Another one right here. And now I have my brick wall. All right, so we have soft, we have bumpy, we have sharp, we have rough, and we have hard and smooth. All right, these are different kinds of textures that you can draw or paint to represent texture. Great job. All right, beginners, if you didn't already guess it, which I know I love, you did if I haven't already told you, um, we are gonna make a map this week, which I'm really excited, or today. All right, and I think it'll go very well with our Christopher Columbus geography um, that we're studying. All right, now, if you look at, it looks pretty old. All right, it doesn't look at all like a new map. This is what a newer map looks like. Not that new, that one's actually pretty old too. All right, but this is a pretty old map that we're making. And it, when you first got it, it probably smelled kind of weird. I don't know if you wanna smell it. All right, what I did is I folded it up. That's why you have kind of these lines right here. And I dipped it in coffee. And then I tore the pages and then I got the edges and put some dark brown on them to make it really old. And we, after I dipped it in coffee, I got salt and I sprinkled it on top, all right? So now if you look at the edges and if you feel the edges, you have texture there. If you look over here where um, it looks like really old looking, all right, these little dots that you have going around, there's texture there that I created with the salt, all right, so now our maps look really, really old. And if you're lucky, it still might smell like coffee. It might not, all right? Now, some of your guys' maps actually have quite a bit of coffee on it. So what I want you to do, if you have um, a map that has quite a bit of coffee, grab, not a tissue, but you wanna grab a napkin. All right, you're gonna wanna fold it in half just so we don't hurt our fingers. And we're gonna lay it on the table and we're actually gonna um, sand it down almost. We're gonna go in a circular um, motion over the salty parts, because there's some parts that might be a little smooth and then you have some really rough parts. You're gonna go very gently. You're not gonna push down hard a lot um, at all. I mean, you're not gonna push down hard at all. Because if I'm going like this and I'm really going at it with my paper, really rubbing it back and forth, what's gonna happen? My paper is gonna begin to tear. And then it's gonna really look like an old map, right? But it's gonna tear so much that we won't be able to use it for our project. So make sure you gently go in circles around the salty parts on your paper. All right, and when you're done, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this map together. All right, beginners, you have a red oil pastel. The red oil pastel will be at the very, very, very end of the video. If you use your red oil pastel right now in the beginning, it will mess up everything. We can only use our red oil pastel when? At the very, very end, because we're only gonna use it for one thing, all right? So make sure it stays in the bag until it's, I tell you to pull it out and use it. All right, beginners, so let's go over our texture really fast again, because we're gonna be using some of these, all right? Texture, um, it describes how things look and feel, rough, smooth, hard, soft, sharp, or even bumpy. And we're gonna use a couple of these, or at least one of these today. All right, so we have soft, bumpy, rough, sharp, hard, and smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and work with our pencil today first, all right? And then um, after this, we'll give it some color. But when because we're working with our pencil, all right, we don't wanna push down too hard because if I push down too hard, it's gonna be hard to erase and we're gonna see lines everywhere, all right? Now, if you need a parent's help, go ahead and ask a parent to help you. Um, but I really do want to encourage you to try on your own. Don't have your mommy and daddy do everything for you, all right? Um, have them do the pointing method where they um, make the line with your, their finger and you follow along to make the object, all right? So let's go ahead and start right here in the corner of our paper. Now we are gonna make, because a lot of maps have this, they have a little picture of a compass. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with a circle. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the circle the best you can. All right, and after we do a circle, we're gonna do a little circle, teeny tiny in the middle. We're gonna have one what? Pointing north, make another spike, pointing south pointing east and pointing west. All right, and then right here, we're gonna do an N. What else? An E, an S, and a W. All right, never eat soggy waffles. And then if you want to, you can make more spikes. 
for decoration because we really want to make sure our map looks pretty neat. All right, so now that we drew our compass, let's go ahead and make the treasure part of our map because what did Columbus want to do? He wanted to find um, new places and he wanted to find treasure along the way. So let's go ahead and draw our island, all right, or our landmass. So to do that, let's actually go ahead and start right here. Now, for our landmass, we want it to be, do we want it to be very smooth? Do we want a circled island? No, we want our island to be big, all right? But we still wanna leave room on the sides, but we want our island to be um, rough feeling. Let's do an example really fast. Something smooth is like this, but an island, we want it to be really rough, so we're gonna kind of make it rough looking and feeling, all right? So take your time, make sure it's not perfectly straight. We want it to be what we want it to be bumpy. So let's start right here. And like this, it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. All right, and I made a mistake right here. Let me erase it really quickly. All right, now that I have my island, if you notice, I left this part open right here because right here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a river and I'm gonna make sure my river looks a little bit wavy, like so. And I'm gonna go like this because remember, rivers are what? They're always running, they're wiggly. All right, so now I have my landmass and a river. So what I'm gonna do is on this corner right here, cause I have room. I'm gonna do something that looks like this and you'll see why in just a minute. On this corner right here as well, I'm gonna do the same. And I also right here, I will do the same. All right, and what we're gonna do, why we made these lines, is because our island is elevated. That means it's really high. That means these areas are gonna be cliffs. To represent our cliffs, we're gonna draw these lines like this. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some hills. And I'm gonna look on my sheet. Are hills soft? No. Are they sharp? Are they smooth? No, hills are bumpy. So right here in this area, I'm gonna make some hills. All right. All right, just like that. And then right here in this corner, I'm gonna go ahead and make some mountains. Just like that. I think on my map, right here in this area, I'm gonna make something that Christopher Columbus was looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and make a treasure box. Now using our line, we talked about geometric shapes, we talked about um, organic shapes, natural shapes, and we also talked about 3D shapes. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna make a big, pretty big treasure box, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and make this right here, like so. You can go ahead and copy me as well. Excellent job. I'm gonna go ahead and make another rectangle right here here. All right, now watch very closely what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna connect this line to this one, like this. And I'm gonna connect my bottom line to that one right there. And I'm gonna erase this little triangle I have going on. 
So now I have a square, all right? And then right here at the corner of this square, I'm gonna make my lid for my treasure box. So I'm gonna make it curved. Like that. I'm gonna go to the other side right here and make another curve like that. And then I'm gonna draw a straight line like this. Now this is kind of tricky. You might need to ask your mom and dad for help. Right here at the bottom of this curve, I'm gonna go ahead and make a straight line connecting to that right there. And now I'm gonna go inside my treasure box and make sure my rectangle is nice and cleaned out. And as well as the front like that. So now I have my treasure chest. All right, and what's inside treasure chest? Yeah, that's right, diamonds and gold. So you can make a couple little circles there to represent your gold, maybe some falling out because Columbus really wanted to find some treasure. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and make some palm trees right over here in this corner. So to do that, I'm gonna make a line like this. And I'm gonna make a higher one like this, all right? Not too close together. But for my palm tree is I'm gonna swirl, make a little curve down, make another little curve. I, uh, remember, if you have trouble and you need help, have your parent draw um, with their finger as you follow along, all right? And then a curve down. And we're gonna repeat the same for this palm tree right here. We're gonna curve, 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 and curve. And what do some palm trees have? That's right, they have some coconuts. So we can draw some coconuts, maybe some coconuts fell on the floor. Hopefully not on Columbus's head. Alrighty, and we're almost done. What we're gonna go ahead and do right here, because we have quite a bit of room, is we're gonna make a ship. Now, if you remember, what are the names of the ship that Columbus took? He took three. It was La Nina, which was the smallest, so La Nina, La Pinta, and La Santa Maria. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just do one ship, and we're gonna do the ship that Columbus was on, and can you remember what the name was that one? The Santa Maria. So we're gonna start off with a line like this, not too big, kinda small. Then we're gonna go up like this and make a little step. And then we're gonna go up one more time and make a little step. On this side, we're gonna make a line like this, a little bit bigger. And we're gonna go right here and we're gonna go down and around like this to make our ship. And we're gonna make it pointy if we want to, like that. We can erase this right here. Excellent job. And we're gonna make some sails like this, we'll make three. We'll make a small one, which is can be like a little square. We can make a big one right here in the front. And we can make another one right here, like that. Excellent job. If we wanna make it even a little more pointier, we can like that. All right, and what did Christopher's Columbus sail have? It had a cross on it, so if you'd like to make a cross as well, you can if you wanna add those little details. You don't have to, it's completely up to you. All right, now the last thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna draw some ocean waves. Actually, that's not the last thing I was playing. There's one more thing, but first let's draw our waves. And what are the waves? They're kind of pointy. All right, another texture we're adding. Are we gonna draw them all over? No, we can do one in this corner. All right, we can do one right up here. We can do one in this corner. All right, now the last, last thing that we will be doing is we are gonna draw the way to the treasure because that's what Columbus needs to do. He needs to get to the treasure. So to do that, because his ship is landing right here and the treasure's over here, this is what we're gonna do. We are gonna make lines. So we're gonna start here. They might have stopped to get some, maybe coconuts, some food for the trip. And they're gonna keep going, keep going. Oh, there's a river. They have to go around the river. So they're going around. And oh, 
There's mountains. They want to go around the mountains, but there's too many, so they're going to go through the mountains. All right, they might have gotten a little bit lost. Maybe they had to stop for some more water. And then they found their treasure. So we're gonna put an X right next to the treasure box. Great job. All right, so now that we drew our treasure map like this, we are gonna go ahead and start coloring it in together. All right, we are gonna use color pencils. We will not be using crayons because I've tried making one with crayons and it just got too messy, all right? The lines were too big. We are gonna use only color pencils, all right? If you do not have color pencils, hmm, wait to color it and maybe I can let you borrow some later, but we're only gonna use color pencils. We don't wanna use markers as well because our paper is textured as it is, um, or textured as is, we will end up ruining our markers. So what are we using? Color pencils. Go ahead and color our picture. Now, what I'm gonna work with first are my waves. And what color are waves? Yeah, the water, we tend to draw blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my blue waves. All right, nice and slowly. So I'm gonna go nice and slowly right on top of the line. All right, I don't wanna leave too much pencil marks but I still want to watch. I still want to push down quite hard because I want to I want it to really really pop. All right, I have some more waves over here. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and work on my palm trees. And what color are tree trunks? Yeah, they're brown. So let me go ahead and get brown. And I'm going to go ahead and trace my line like this. I'm gonna go ahead and start tracing my branches. Now, to make my tree look a little bit more fluffy, I'm gonna go ahead and draw some little lines going off of it. To make, if you want to, you don't have to. Just if you want to make your palm tree look like it's a little bit more fluffy. Right, and I'm gonna go back with my brown for my coconuts. You can go ahead and do your mountains either gray or brown. I'm gonna go ahead and do them gray. To represent the water in the river, I'm gonna go ahead and draw some lines like this. Now my treasure box, what color is a treasure box? The treasure box is gonna be brown, made of wood. I'm gonna go ahead and make some rubies in here. I'm just gonna do that by making little triangles. Make my sails white. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a black and I'm gonna to begin to outline my um, island. I'm gonna go ahead and start tracing this or outlining this. For my compass, I'm gonna go ahead and make a blue circle in the middle. 
And then I'm gonna outline my circle in blue as best as I can. I'm gonna make it kinda dark, so I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. Are you guys freeze for just a minute what you're doing um because i was filming this and i made a huge mistake but it's okay yours will not come out like mine hopefully okay so i accidentally went ahead and did my red oil pastel and i said we're gonna save it for last which we are so don't use your red oil pastel yet because I forgot one more thing. Let's go over our texture. We have some bumpy stuff. We have some pointy stuff to show the water of splashes, how it kind of looks like a point, all right? It's, um, we have some mountains, all right? And we use a little bit of texture. Our paper really has texture with the salt and with the ruffles. And we're gonna add one more texture. Now, this may ruin my project, but I don't want it to ruin yours. So before we do our red oil pastel um, to show where Columbus had gone, we are actually gonna add some more texture to our paper. All right, we are gonna crumble up our paper. But to crumble up your paper first, you need to get an adult with you. Get your mom, get your dad, get somebody. All right, because sometimes when we're ripping stuff or crumbling up stuff, we can get a little bit carried away. All right, and we don't know when to stop. Because let's say I have a paper here, all right, and I tell you to crumble it up. We only want to crumble it up a little bit. We don't want to crumble it up too much because if we make too many crumbles, it will ruin our map. We won't be able to see anything on our map and we don't want that. We still want to be able to see things on our map. So watch, we're going to crumble it up. Stop. And that's it. That's how crumbled we want our map to be. I don't want you doing this. Watch, this is a big no, no. What happens if I do this? Let's see. Let's see what happens. It's way too much crumble. See how tiny all these little wrinkles are? We do not want that. So the reason you need your mom and dad is to tell you to stop crumbling, all right? I don't want you to keep crumbling, all right? So tell your mom and dad to come by you. When you start crumbling and it becomes too much, parents, please tell them to stop and then they can smooth it out before using their red oil pastel in the next part. All right, so let me go ahead and crumble mine. Now I already have red oil pastel, so mine get, may get a little smeared. All right, hopefully not too much. I'm not gonna crumble up too much. All right, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop right there, and I'm gonna open up my map. Ooh, it didn't get too ruined. Just a little place here or there. All right, so now my map has even more texture now, and looks even more like a treasure map. All right, so let's go and finish um, making our treasure maps together. Lastly, I'm gonna get my bright red oil pastel and I'm gonna go ahead and outline those marks really, really well to show where Columbus had been. just like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this art project. I know I did. Great job. And really quickly, beginners, I just want to show you how absolutely amazing all of your pumpkins came out. They look awesome.